And so this really uh, sets the stage for the, uh, for the reason I'm here today, and it really is to share with you the excitement of the breakthrough in fiber materials that I believe are really going to create a transformation that is akin to those transformations that occurred in the 20th century. I believe that the big, one of the big uh, transformations of the 21st century is going to be taking fabrics and apparel and turning them from something which is, has a fairly low functionality into a high-tech industry. And so, getting back to our original question, um, why is it that we could come and expect the world out of products like uh, the iPhone and expect it to rapidly evolve and change from year to year and to add function to it and to have in it uh, communications and display and computation and games and so on. But yet our t-shirt doesn't change much and we never expect it to change much. And it hasn't changed much for as long as it's been around. And so now that you've uh, heard uh, my introduction, you now know that in fact, um, what enables the iPhone to really have its amazing functionality is the computer chip. And it's the convergence of the computer chip with some of the information and communications technology. It, has, it is a, a cellular device, but in fact, what enables the cellular towers to talk and to communicate are optical fibers. So in fact, the iPhone is a convergence of the computation and communication breakthroughs that, uh, that I just discussed. And so we have on the left hand, what is an integrated uh, circuit, which has billions of transistors built into it, and on the right hand is just a fiber. And what could we expect of a fiber? What we've been doing in the past few years is to try to expect a whole lot more. And what we're in the process of doing is uh, imagining and producing fibers that are devices. What we'd like to do is realize entire integrated circuits inside internal to the fiber. So this is not an integrated circuit that is glued onto a fiber or attached to it. It is the basic elements of the fiber itself. And so we are literally re-engineering what a fiber looks like. And in order to do that, there are three things that need to change. The first thing is that fibers could no longer be made of a single material. Function and functionality is associated with multiple materials coming together. If you look for a second at your iPhone, you immediately realize that there's at least two. But once you dig in to the insides, you'll find there's many, many more materials. So a fiber has to be made of at least two, if not three or more materials. Number one. Number two. Once you combine materials together, you could start talking about architecture. And architecture is what eventually delivers a function. So it's the combination of materials and architecture. And finally, the scale at which you need to control the internal features inside the fiber have to be down to and similar to what occurs in a, in a semiconductor device. And so we set out to change all of these and really contrast these with what conventional fibers look like, which are typically made of a single material, or even in the case of a communication fiber, really have just a core and a clad, and introduce a new paradigm, which is that of multi-material fibers. And really what we're doing here is we're combining multiple materials, we're creating uh, architectures that are highly elaborate and have many devices in them, and finally, um, doing things and, and achieving length scales that rival the length scales of semiconductor devices. And so this is what uh, uh, one of these new fibers looks like. What that immediately does is it, it allows us to start making fibers that have vastly different functions by varying the types of materials, by varying the architecture associated with these materials, you could actually design and implement very different devices. And so uh, on the left here are fibers that conduct light, and next to it are fibers that could be optical uh, identifiers or barcodes, and next to that are fibers that are lasers. If you want to make a fabric that is a display, you need to have a fabric that is a light source. And in fact, you need your fabric to be multiple light sources and be able to uh, project light in very many different colors. A laser internal to the fiber allows you uh, to do that. And so the vision here is twofold. Number one is how many different functions and functionalities could we build into a single strand of fiber? 
If a computer chip could have a billion transistors in it, could a single fiber have a billion functions in it? And if a single fiber has a billion functions in it, what does the fabric look like? It's like I ask you, well, suppose I were to give you a neuron and ask you to, you'd look at the neuron and, under a microscope and say, well, that's a pretty complex little organism. But you would never imagine what a brain does by looking just at a single neuron. It's the combination of neurons into a brain that really gives you this amazing, amazing synergistic complexity. And that's really the way we're uh, envisioning uh, fabrics, is by combining all these functional elements into something that does a whole lot more. Now, what makes this really amazing from a, a, a scientific uh, standpoint and from a technological standpoint, and I'm sure many of you have heard the notion of nanotechnology. And you've heard great things about nanotechnology. And it turns out that materials, when made at the nanoscale, could be very useful and have unusual properties. The big problem with nanoscale materials is finding those nanoparticles in the first place. How do you find them? How do you connect into them? How do you bridge the gap between the nanoscale and the macroscale, which is the one we interact with? The nice thing about fibers is they actually allow you to very simply bridge that gap. And internal to a fiber, you could find domains that are on the nanoscale and 10 nanometer scale, as we're showing over here, and actually draw these fibers into kilometer length scales. And so you have now a single material that gives you control, both on the 10 to the minus 9 meter scale, but then allows you to produce it at kilometer length scale. Now, if you recall the three examples that I gave you regarding the breakthroughs of the 20th century, what you saw there is the breakthrough in materials are not enough. They have to be put in the context of a technology. And the question then again is, suppose you have a light-sensing fiber. What could you do with it? What interesting things could a light-sensing fiber do? And it turns out that when you combine these into a fabric or a grid, what you could do is, in fact, identify a point of illumination. And what that got us thinking about just a few years ago is, wow, if we could identify a point of illumination, maybe we could identify an angle of illumination. And if we could do that, could we actually implement a digital lens? Could we actually create a fabric that sees, that is capable of imaging optically its surroundings, without having any lens in the beam path? It turned out that this uh, basic idea uh, did, in fact, or was, in fact, realizable. Uh, in order to make it happen, one had to go back to the materials and engineer them, not only to have a single detector, but to have multiple nested detectors. This allowed us to detect light at uh, different colors. And the ability to detect light in different colors allowed us, over time, to develop this perception uh, of depth and actually to get, uh, uh, to get imaging. And so we, in fact, then did an experiment. We had a little smiley face. We illuminated this smiley face with green and red uh, light. Our fabric collected the optical information, fed it into a computer, and the computer was able to discern, to identify the object from which the light emanated, a fabric that sees. And so fabrics that could image their surroundings, fabrics that, are, that operate like cameras, but are not cameras just out of a very small aperture. You're seeing actually out of your entire surface of your body is something which I think is very much in our uh, future. The next step was to say, wow, if fibers could see, could they also hear? Now, in order for a fiber to hear, what it needs to do is take in an acoustic signal and transform it into an electrical pulse. And so what we did, then did is combined materials that are piezoelectric materials into a fiber and drew the fiber down. And basically what you see there is the drawn a fiber in its cross-section. The fiber has uh, metal leads coming out on the very end. And if you connect those and put, attach them to an oscillating uh, voltage source, what you get is the, the fiber actually emits sound. And not only does it do that, but if you were to project sound onto it, talk to it, it could pick up the sound and translate it or transform it back into an electrical signal. So these were the first uh, fibers that hear. And in fact, these were published about a year and a half ago on the cover of a journal called Nature Materials. What we've done since then is we've taken these fibers and begun to form 
phased arrays out of them. What is a phased array? It's a collection of antennas that allows you to steer the beam. Now, why would you want to do that? So I'm, I'm sure some of you like to go to the gym on occasion, uh, or maybe even to run outside, definitely in the beautiful weather here. And one of the things I'm sure you've been challenged with is the, your ability to listen to music while you're running. And it turns out that as you're running, these little headphones just pop out of your ear, and it's just uncomfortable. But imagine now that you could weave into your clothes these little uh, speakers. And that these speakers are woven tightly enough and close enough that they could be formed into a phased array that actually directs sound. What that allows you to do is that basically to take your clothes and to project sound right directly into your ears. So there really is no need to put anything in your ears. Your clothes will be directing, focusing the sound right into your ears. So this is an example of some of the things that active and functional fibers will be able uh, to do, hopefully in the not too distant future. Last but not least is a little uh, experiment that we conducted on uh, fiber and fabric displays. In order to do that, we had to create a fiber that is a light bulb. What we did was we took a, a hollow fiber, put in it a, a gain material, a material that emits light when excited, and uh, since we surrounded it with a little mirror, it actually started lasing, and this was the first uh, fiber or fabric lasing display. Really, what the future uh, holds here is a, a pixel that not only is capable of projecting light, a fiber pixel that not only projects light, but could also communicate differently in different directions. And so if you were to make a display out of this, unlike any other display that pretty much looks the same regardless of angle, this display could actually project one type of information to the folks sitting over here and completely different type of information to the people that are sitting over there. So you could basically watch a TV, have your uh, child sitting next to you. They could be watching their uh, favorite PG-13 while you could look at your favorite, uh, I guess, R-rated uh, uh, movies. So anyway, um, the exciting thing here is that there really have been some very significant breakthroughs in materials and in the technologies that make use of them. And um, my uh, opinion and uh, uh, forecast is that these are really going to create a pretty significant um, revolution in the areas of, of fabric and apparel in the years ahead. So thank you very much. And if there's any questions. Okay, there we have it. Fibers that can see in here. Professor Yoel Finn.